see what's going on guys kalamazi here and this is going to be a pretty legit video i'm pumped for it today patch 9.2 was data mined it did not hit ptr however blizzard did put a blue post out saying that due to them having the next week off for thanksgiving and things i guess maybe not going as planned as much as they had hoped uh the build might end up being pushed back until after they get back from their thanksgiving break but regardless there was a build pushed to a client or candidate however you want to word it that was data mineable. And with that being said, some things were found. Uh, Warlock tier bonuses for Aft, Demo, Destro, two piece, four piece. The Incubus, the male succubus uh, skin has been found as well. And a couple other things. Now, this video today is really going to be talking about the tier sets, the two piece, the four piece. I've looked at most of the classes. Some classes have some pretty broken ones. Um, Warlock, I legitimately feel Warlock has some of, if not the coolest two pieces and four pieces out there. The Aft one addresses Aft's issues. Um, you might have seen this one coming a bit. The demo one is really cool. Some positives, a, a, a couple of negatives here and there. We'll talk about them. And the Destro one is uh, pretty cool as well with some hidden uh, potential, which we'll talk about a bit here. So that being said, I do want to give a heads up here. Um, similar to patch 9.15, 9.1, all that stuff. The 9.2 Warlock spreadsheet will indeed be uh, under creation, I guess under development is under development now at this point with 9.2 being data mine and things like that. Uh, if you're interested in that, the tier three Thelgar rank from a Patreon does indeed get early access to that. And also give a huge message, message shout out to my patrons. Once again, thank you for all the support guys. I really truly do indeed appreciate it. Uh, with that being said, any weak horrors or profiles or anything you see here, you can grab from my Twitch. If you want to swing by, hang out anytime, uh, feel free to do so. With that being said, let's get into it. Starting off, I guess, briefly with the Incubus model and then going into tier sets. Oh yeah. And I also forgot to add that uh, I should mention this briefly here. Uh, my Twitter handle has changed. It's no longer Kalamazing. It's now Kalamazi with two eyes. And to a similar extent, I now also have an Instagram. If you're watching this video night one, there's probably not a whole lot on it, if anything at all. I plan on adding some things the next day or so. But yeah, if you're not following my Instagram, uh, feel free to do so. And yeah, heads up, my Twitter handle did change. Now let's get into uh, the video. Alrighty, for those of you wanting to see the Incubus model, which surprisingly hadn't been spoiled anywhere for a while after, after being mentioned a couple months ago, give or take. Uh, here it is. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest, like comparing it to the current version of the Succubus and things. Okay. It might be a bit much. Um, it does look pretty high res, uh, depending how you want to look at it. I get memes aside and everything. We're not going to be playing against demonology, which, uh, is sort of unfortunate, but Destro and Aft can have a bit of play with it. My main, I don't want to say concern because like the, the model does look cool. It's high res. It's, it's been updated from, you know, I guess the lower res version that the Succubus has had for a while. Barring, I believe there was a Legion reskin with a glyph you could use for the Succubus. My main, I guess, complaint is that honestly, I can't use it for Destro or Aft in Mythic Plus or really any relevant setting. Because realistically, if I don't have to interrupt, I'm playing my Imp because it can change targets at range. And if I have to kick, I'm playing my Fell Hunter. I haven't really played the Succubus as a pet, barring being in arenas or like some kind of weird CC setting for a very, very long time. Uh, having some kind of ability similar to maybe to like Hunters have like uh, Tenacity, Cunning, I think Ferocious, different like specs for their pets maybe. That'd be sort of cool. Maybe seeing the pet get an interrupt or I don't know, maybe the caster getting a baseline interrupt themselves would be a cool step in the right direction, but the model is cool. Is it going to be used for me a lot? Personally, probably not, but it's a pretty cool update. I'll have links to all these down below in the video description as well, if you want to check them out, but I don't know, DLDR, uh, it looks pretty cool. So with that being said, let's get into the actual tier bonuses. Now I will say the sets that were actually like spoiled on Wowhead, the bonuses themselves are indeed correct. However, it seems that some of them are sort of data mine out of place. For example, the actual affliction bonus, this is the two piece, this is the four piece. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure to make note of that for each section when we end up going down. I figured we start off with AF, then go Destra, or then go Demo, then go Destra, whatever order they come out in here. So number one, the affliction two piece is actually deliberate malice. Malefic Rapture's damage is increased by 15% and each cast extends the duration of corruption, agony, and unstable affliction for two seconds. So number one, the affliction single target issue is being addressed here. Um, Rapture was nerfed in 9.1 and uh, that along with Malefic, that, that along with the focus malignancy conduit and technically losing a uh, Shadow's Embrace, there were a lot of nerfs to aft single target in 9.1 without really any kind of changes barring dark layer becoming two minutes which is not really an equal trade-off losing you know that huge single target profile regardless though this is very solid as your two piece number one a 15 percent increase in rapture damage is very very solid and each cast extending the duration of corruption agony ua is honestly it's solid it's good it's but it's even bigger than it actually seems so 
if you're looking at aft from a single target perspective which i mean yes it does have aoe implications heavy aoe you're still seeding most likely unless it's like a spread kind of council's based fight but we'll get to that so if you're looking at like malefic wrath affliction for example number one 15 percent increase rapture damage now it's sort of a drain soul rapture hybrid kind of build because drain soul has a lot of damage but the interesting part here number one is that night fey prefers rapture windows or uh, these one minute spikes like one minute damage profile <laughs> You still rapture during your soul rot in your PS, and you'll let you'll let your malefic wrath drop when you are playing Night Fey about 15-ish seconds beforehand. Pull three, four shards, then rapture back your three stacks, keep draining. But you want to get that actual soul rot PS value with all your dots being up, right? For the rapture value. Necro Lord, on the other hand, just wants to straight up maintain malefic wrath the entire time. So the play styles are different. Now, it was brought up that, oh, well, you know, Necro Lord can make better use of it because you're rapturing more often for the actual dot extension, but it doesn't really matter a whole lot and you can almost make a case for it being a little bit more relevant during the actual night fey rapture windows in a sense because as long as they don't cap it and say okay ua has a max duration of i don't know 30 seconds right which i don't think they do uh same for like corruption and agony whether you're rapturing altogether like five six in a row or spreading five or six over the course of you know 40 seconds right you're still going to get the baseline, let's say five raptures. Five raptures in a rapture window for Night Fae is going to be a 10 second dot extension, right? Five raptures over the course of, you know, half a minute for Nephrilord is still going to be overall a 10 second dot extension. Now it might make, you know, refreshing dots at certain points a bit more awkward or things like that, but you're still getting the actual, you know, refresh or the, I guess, increased duration value. So not a huge difference there. But when it comes to the actual rapture windows for Affliction, right? I like playing Night Fae. The actual increase here, yes, Siphon Life, Phantom Singularity, and Soul Rot aren't covered. So you're going to, have to, you're going to have to refresh your Siphon, and PS and Soul Rot will fall. But keep in mind, Withering Bolt, the conduit, increases Drain Soul value based on the amount of dots you have active. So only having to refresh that Siphon Life versus having to refresh the Agony, and the Corruption, and the UA, and the Siphon Life will give you more time to drain, maybe more time to Rapture, depending on your Shard Gen and things like that, it can actually lead to even more relevant drain soul value playing that build. Now, similarly, Necro Lord can just drain more over the course of the actual, I guess, buff because dot extensions, all that. It's really cool to see. And that's in single target. In two target, obviously, hey, Corruption, Agony, UA. Um, whether you play Siphon Life in two targets or just go Rise and Agony or AC, probably Rise at this point. Um, you're not really playing Male Malefic Wrath in those settings it's either like dss maybe even synergy depending on what you're doing um we haven't really seen a setting like this in a while because sanctum was not really a great af raid boring dss fights but regardless you're going to be able to maintain those dots for a very long time into target not having to refresh a crazy amount now two seconds is not as big as it seems but you know when you have two targets increase shard gen um haste effects things like that it's going to actually like legitimately lead to a pretty long extension and if you have the rolling agony conduit equipped uh <laughs> Your, your agony is going to last literally uh, a minute, give or take. Okay, might be a bit excessive, but you get what I'm saying. Very good single target. Um, just implications. And Rapture, once again, it's like it's buffing Rapture on like your UA target. It's buffing Rapture in general. So good single target, good two target. It probably makes Rapture better in two target than spamming seed is now in plus. Uh, three plus targets, I would assume you still seed, playing some of the seeds. Um, but regardless, a very good two piece, like very, very solid. This is a this is a strong two piece, like having both effects here is really, really good. Very happy with this. The four piece, ah, Calamitous Crescendo, Crescendo, yeah, there you go. Okay, while Agony, Corruption, and Unstable Affliction are active, your Drain Soul has a four percent chance, and Shadow Ball has a twenty percent chance to make your next Malefic Rapture cost no soul shards and cast instantly now number one the wording on this is a bit awkward cast instantly i thought initially it was just like it casts on its own like instantly i'm pretty sure it just makes it an instant cast um you have to cast it yourself still incurring the gcd but regardless pretty big right so now it seems like drain soul okay why would you play drain soul it's four percent versus 20 this favors shadow bolt a crazy amount but keep in mind drain soul has multiple periodic ticks over the course of the drain soul so that means realistically uh if there's five ticks 20 percent 20 percent um drain soul being a channel not having travel time uh the same if not arguably a bit better and shadow uh, drain soul is what you play in the first place anyway so pretty much the same percent here um and it with drain soul it can i would assume technically proc between or like for each periodic tick which is a bit awkward if you're like playing uh necro lord for example and you get it during like, like a decimating bolt uh buff drain soul very very niche kind of setting 
but there you're going to have to watch your drain souls getting that proc because if it does proc back to back i'll be at a low chance you know off individual ticks uh you could lose a rapture cast and that could be pretty big and rng is rng so uh pretty cool to see here once again like not just a single target increase can be an aoe increase two target three target maybe in mythic plus for example you're going to put up your agony you're going to have corruption rolling obviously and you want to have one ua on one target after you dump your seeds what are you doing you're draining basically because you're playing rolling agony you're playing seeds so corruption's basically permanent anyways you're just draining a target right so drain your ua target and uh well, hope for procs, right? Because that Rapture could instead not be just single target based. It could be a, you know, four or five target Rapture. Albeit you're not playing Siphon Life, but still uh, pretty good. It's so like both bonuses here. Um, good single target, good two target implications. Can't even be good in three target. I'm going to say now, all three specs are close tier wise, like bonus wise to me. But AF, the AF bonus feels the most synergistic and honestly probably does the most for the spec compared to Destro and Demo. But that being said, let's move on. Demonology. Okay, so uh, the Malicious Imp pack. This is actually the four piece. This is actually the two piece here, ripped from the portal. So number one, ripped from the portal, called Dreadstalkers has a 100% chance to summon an additional Dreadstalker. Called Dreadstalkers. So, there's a lot of there's a lot behind this actual tier bonus that we need to talk about, right? Number one, obviously we know, okay, well, three Dreadstalkers, uh, big dogs build. It's a third dog to Dreadbite, a third dog trying like Dreadbite again, maybe with, while playing FTS for a reproc or a reapplication of FTS uh, via Carnivorous Stalkers, the actual conduit. And on top of all that, uh, you actually end up, where's Carnivorous at right here? There you go. On top of that, the wording on the actual molten core uh demonology effect being a, a demonic core i'm sorry uh when your summon dread stalkers fade away you have a 100 percent chance to absorb their life essence granting you a stack of demonic core you have two dogs right now which is when they both expire you get two, two core procs this bonus is going to give you three core procs whenever your dogs expire now obviously okay yeah the cap is four um it is what it is this this very well might lead to uh having at times over capping on, on demonic core stacks there's not much you can do about it right like even in the past playing soul conduit and stuff with demo that just is sort of the nature of demo in a sense at times it is what it is right but still there's no real downside to this you know okay i might over cap once in a while but at the same time if you're uh generous with your demon bolt cast or demon bolt procs and things you know and if you have a good eye on your uh, remaining like dog duration uh, three stacks here, I think is going to be not terribly hard to leverage. Now, keep in mind, Hand of Gul'dan, uh, Conduit, Demonic, or um, Born of Blood is getting, I would assume, an eye level bump up, bump up there as well. So a higher chance for Hand to actually proc a Demon Bolt. Uh, we're going to be a de just Demon Bolt machines when this patch comes around. It's going to be actually insane. So a uh, big thing here, honestly, like comparing Dreadlash is very, very close to Demonic Strength and single target right now anyways, like playing Carnivorous versus Fell Commando. With this change, I would assume you just play Dreadlash and everything. Dreadlash, Carnivorous, everything. And probably just this build here. Biofiend, Grimoire still. And playing Decon. Yes, you're still playing Decon. But I mean, like, Dreadlash number one. Dreadlash gives you a much more consistent damage profile. Whether it's like, you know, AOE or single target. You're casting your dogs every 20 seconds roughly, right? Barring holding a proc briefly for a Tyrant setup. Demonic Strength is a lot of, is, is more like bursty kind of damage. But on a one minute cooldown, right? So I would be very surprised if this tier bonus just doesn't, basically like default ship this towards red lash and carnivorous stalkers playing just carnivorous tyrant soul and born of blood i would assume probably in basically every setting the bonus looks very very strong from that uh perspective now the four piece oh this is also a third dog for your tyrant which is nice hey uh decon value right the four piece right your hand of gul'dan has a five percent chance per soul shard spent summon a malicious imp when slain, Malicious Imp grants a Soul Shard and will either deal uh, Spell Tower, Fire Damage to all nearby enemies of your Implosion or ha or deal it to your current target. Okay, so now we found the actual like, spells and abilities that the Imp... We found the Imp and the actual abilities that it does uh, on like the PTR version of Wowhead, right? So here is the actual Imp. Let's see. Here is the Malicious Imp. Now, it does sort of seem like it's just going to be a regular Imp. The number one question here, though, is like... Is it actually a regular imp? Is it a friendly imp? Does it count towards like one of our pets? Because like if that does, it's more decon value if it procs, right? Number two, how much health does the imp have? Is it like a vile fiend? Is it like a like a like a felguard? Is it like a an imp? Is it what kind of health pool does it have? Is it a dread stalker health pool more than imps, less than a felguard? We don't really know, but if it's 
regardless, regardless, if it's a friendly pet, it's more decon value, right? If it's some kind of like mid-tier health pet, I mean, RNG is RNG, but uh, even more decon value with stamina scaling, right? So the actual two abilities here, one being uh, Doom Bolt, um, deals a spell power shadow flame damage to the target. Now, interestingly enough, this is the actual single target one, and here is like the uh, implosion one, right? Deals uh, spell power damage, shadow flame damage to nearby enemies. So the actual bonus, I can find this here wherever it went. Uh, yeah, the actual bonus, is this it? Where, where'd it go? Here we go. <laughs> the actual bonus says fire damage, but the actual ability says shadow flame damage or whatever it was, shadow flame, yeah, right? So if it is indeed shadow flame damage, FTS, Dreadlash, they increase shadow flame damage. They were fixed in or changed 9.1 to increase demon fire damage from your tyrant. I would assume this imp gains the FTS uh, bonus damage ability whenever either you implode the actual imp for the actual AV buff, which I believe is spite, or the actual single target that does when it expires being doom bolt. So even more synergy there than we actually thought there'd be. Um, pretty impressive. And the, the big thing here is we just need to get on PTR and test this out, right? Obviously, whenever PTR hits in two weeks, because we don't know if the imp is hostile friendly, how much health it has, things like that. But honestly, though, I like both these bonuses. They're very, very cool. And it's funny because I referenced a, a bonus sort of like this in the tier uh, bonus video a few weeks ago I put out and also like a rapture bonus damage rating, right? Which is cool. Similarly enough, I mentioned actually like summoning an imp as one of the bonuses for demonology in that video. I like to see back. This is cool. My one sort of like, I guess, wish it was a little different thing is that both of these are, are just good decon abilities, right? Like the mana consumption. Like so they sort of work with sack souls, but dude, sack souls is just garbage. Like it, it can be buffed 400%. It's still garbage, right? Okay. That might be excessive, but you get what I'm saying. Sack souls is not good. And unfortunately, Nether Portal, I mean, even with the buff that it got, uh, if these just don't interact with Portal at all, right? Like, yeah, it'll give you a shard, but it doesn't really do a whole lot, you know? Um, so. It's just more pets, more decon value, more, uh, I, mean, FT, I guess, FTS value. But in the end, you're not playing FTS or a biofeed in the raid, right? With stamina scaling effects and things like that. So very interesting to see where this is at, but I'm happy with both of them. This will add, th this is just solid. Um, three core procs, more dreadlash value, more carnivorous value. And this, albeit the four piece being a bit RNG, it's 15% realistically per hand in Gul'dan cast. You're, you're putting three shards into it, barring it being like a two shard, you know, final hand into Tyrant cast, right? Pretty cool. We got to see where it goes, how it plays out. But overall, I like the demo bonuses a lot too. Not as much as AF, a little bit more RNG factored in here in a sense, but both cool and both sort of fit the, just, just I don't know, the feel of demonology. Or they're within that same spectrum of just, you know, what decons fit in for Shadowlands. Whether you like decon or not, um, I think most everybody will like these demonology bonuses. Oh, and I forgot to add, I assume people are going to ask about Grim Inquisitor's Drag Calling if it makes the dog legendary better than it is. Uh, I, I would assume the answer is yes, but I also assume the answer is it will not beat out Wilfred's. Wilfred is just so strong. Like decon value, tyrant every minute. Um, both of the bonuses sort of working around decon as well. I mean, in the end, we have to wait for PTR. See where Sims are at and all kind of stuff too. Plus, we don't even know how, you know, Covenant Legendaries are going to be. They can nerf some, buff some. They can completely change one or two, right? Uh, it probably will gain, have Grim gain some value, but it's all speculative at this point. For all we know, Horn Nightmare works with this thing too. You can summon two imps. We're not really sure. Uh, Sims PTR testing is where it's going to be, but I still don't see Wilfred's being dethroned with Decon. It's just, it's just, just too good. All right, destruction bonus. There's a lot to, to uh, take in here. Destro. So the actual Destro two piece is actually uh, this. They actually got this one right, but it's sort of it, you can tell they got it right because they play off each other. Now before we even get into them, I will say I, I like how. AF two piece, AF four piece, demo two piece, demo four piece. They have synergy together in a sense, right? But they're not like this two piece happens. So this four piece happens. Like I I'm not a huge fan of them have like one having to happen for the other one to occur. You know, they both might have synergy as yeah, great, but in the end, like I don't like one being completely independent or one being required to like actually trigger the other one. Regardless though, so getting into this two piece here, this is it, right? <clears throat> Casting rain of fire or chaos bolt a 20% chance to make the next cast of the other free. So what this means is if I am, for example, in game casting a chaos bolt with this two piece on and I cast it and it procs, I will have an instant cast rain of fire that I can, well, I, okay, a free rain of fire. It's fine. Uh, Cause it's, it, it's instant cast, right? 
uh, it would be a free rain of fire that you can cast, correct? Now, Rain of Fire and single target was good during beta. There was a build that was pretty solid with it and like that. Uh, a couple questions emerged when we saw this bonus. Number one, like uh, how relevant, how good is Rain of Fire in single target compared to Chaos Bolt? I can put a thing down here and show you briefly. Um, Rain of Fire, it, okay, so here. Rain of Fire, let me get in combat here. So Rain of Fire is, uh, it, it's 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 something. So look, look at the overall damage it does. Rain of Fire dealt, uh, once it's not bugged out, it dealt about 4.8k damage wise and it crit 25% of the time so uh let's say 4.5 4.6 give or take i can launch a bolt how hard does the bolt hit about 13k so uh depending on crits and all that kind of stuff it's about a third to a quarter 30 ish percent of the actual value of a chaos bolt now obviously hey a free cast is a free cast and in the end all you're incurring is an actual gcd right which is not bad um, the first question that emerged before even reading the four piece was, well, does this make Inferno, this talent, better than Cataclysm? Now, Cata is a 40, or sorry, 30 second CD that deals 4200 roughly shadow flame damage uh, whenever you cast it, right? And applies to Immolate. So there's that. Now, you can cast Immolate manually and just do it on your own. It's fine if you're playing Inferno. But unfortunately, like, even look at the baseline tooltip here, Brain of Fire deals roughly 2800 damage, right? Give or take in the tooltip here. I'll even clear this out and we'll get back into combat, right? If I take Inferno, it increases from 2800 to roughly, what are we at here? 3300, right? So let's get back in combat. I'll smack this actual dummy a bit here, cast the Rain of Fire, and watch how much damage it deals. So there's that. Here comes the Rain. And the Rain dealt about uh, 4.7. Didn't uh, It didn't even crit. So it actually dealt less than the previous Rain because the previous Rain crit once. So... Removing the crit from the actual from the previous one, it dealt like 4.2 if you don't count the like, you know the one crit tick, right? The thing is, I opened up on a dummy and had about 78 chaos bolt cast with a random chaos um build going on. Now, at a 20% proc rate, um, depending on what you're doing, eight cash, you're looking at I don't know, you can say with decent RNG, uh, about two random fire cast if my Florida math and thinking and everything here is right, um, uh, during that 30 ish second window, which is you know the same window it takes for cataclysm to come off CD, right? Kata deals 4,400 damage baseline, right? Or 42, right? So it's not like you're gaining, you know, 3,300 damage from the actual Rain of Fire being cast twice, which means, okay, yeah, you know, it's 2K better than Kata. No, you're gaining quite literally, you know, whatever the bonus damage is from Inferno. So instead of being, you know, 3,300, it's actually what? What is it before? It's 2,700. So you're gaining like, I don't know, 500-ish damage um, playing Inferno per cast over Cataclysm. <clears throat> Now, to a similar extent, Immolate does have a bit of like initial damage, application damage, but it's a thousand to be fair. But that also take roughly, uh, you can shave off a thousand here. It would take roughly seven, six to seven Rain of Fire casts to equal a Cataclysm in that actual window, if my math is right, if my Florida math is right. So TLDR, it does not make Inferno better in single target. Now you do have to factor in the shard gen thing here, but uh, a partial shard gen is not gonna make up 7K. So regardless, I don't believe so. We'll wait for Sims, but that sort of, I guess, I don't know, debunks that, however you wanna look at it. Now, getting back to this though, the four piece. When Rain of Fire or Chaos Bolt is freely cast, not just cast, but freely, meaning you had to proc the two piece, right? You can summon, or sorry, you summon an Infernal for eight seconds. So that is the exact ratio of a Rain of Chaos Infernal right now. Uh, it is very similar to like VOP back in the day, right? So there's a couple things here. Uh, number one, like one of my complaints was that, okay, yeah, like you can sort of in Mythic Plus, like I think Zeru mentioned this on Twitter as well, in Mythic Plus, you can start to set, you can like, for example, if you're doing a huge poll at Halls of Atonement, right? Like we saw during the MDI, you can try and cast a Chaos Bolt or two where you're getting all the packs together, maybe proc Herald of Chaos, but you have to cast the Chaos Bolt. It's awkward when you're moving around, trying, when you're moving, trying to set things up, all that kind of stuff, right? But regardless, it's not instant cast, right? Um, or at least the tier bonus doesn't say it's instant cast. Um, then you get in the position, if you proc it, great. You can go like, you know, uh, Rain of Fire with the buff, which will proc an Infernal. Drop your main infernal and have insane shard gen, right? But the problem is like, oh, you got to cast that bolt as a two second cast time, all that stuff, right? You know, uh, it, 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 you know, it is what it is. But uh, we actually found Herald of Chaos on PCR for Wowhead. Uh, the Chaos Bolt, your next Chaos Bolt is free to cast. Um, so the actual Chaos Bolt appears to be instant cast. Uh, the tool tip doesn't say it. But I, I've talked to a handful of people about this and they all agree that it does appear to be an instant cast chaos bolt. 
um, obviously rain of fire being free. So that changes a pretty good bit of things because number one, I mean, hey, okay, whether you're moving or not, like, hey, instant cast chaos vault, that's pretty big. Um, there's also the question of like, if I enter a havoc window and I cast a cast vault, right? You know, and I get a rain of fire proc, do I want to actually cast that rain and lose the GCD in the window or do I just want to like not? Um, because like that rain that you cast could technically proc a free chaos bolt. And, but if that free chaos bolt has a cast time on it, well, it's whatever. If it's instant cast, that changes a lot, right? Which wasn't mentioned in the actual tier set. So there's more to this than technically uh, actually meets the eye here. And I mean, I'll be, okay, it's a what? 20% chance to actually chain the, or it's, it's a 20% chance to proc, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, 20. So 20, uh, like chaining like rain in the bolt into rain in the bolt, Probably not going to happen a whole lot, but there's that essence of RNG, that chaoticness of, of Destro that Blizzard loves, um, right? Now, the other question about Avatar of Destruction is, and this is the big thing, right? Is, does this ability work with Reign of Chaos? Because this version, I, I don't want to say it's like anti-synergistic, because it's not really, you're not losing the shards or anything, but like, I, when I have a Reign of Chaos Infernal down, like my main one, I assume, okay, I'm going to cast a Reign or a Chaos Bolt, and I'm going to use some shards up and have a chance to proc an Infernal. Uh, if you get a proc here, I mean, it's not going to proc anything because you're not using any shards, right? Albeit the Bolt is not instant cast, it's pretty cool, but, you know, it it's sort of like, eh, it's a bit of a weird kind of gray area, right? But if Avatar of Destruction, meaning the 8 second Infernals that you summon whenever you uh, cast a free spell, procs Reign of Chaos, uh, yeah, this ability, this tier set could be pretty insane, right? For example, let, let's say that Rain of Fire uh, does proc you a Chaos Bolt. So you Rain, there's an Infernal. You Bolt, there's an Infernal. You've got two Infernals rolling uh, for eight seconds with insane shard gen, um, which can fuel more Bolts or more Rain of Fire. So proc can keep it going over and over and over. It feels a lot like how VOP did back in the end of BFA Supremacy kind of days, right? Now, this is not Supremacy. Uh, it's not that OP, not that broken, but still... Um, it's something right now, right now, Destro and single target, pretty lackluster, pretty mediocre. Um, the thing about these talents though, is like, are uh, these, uh, these bonuses is that I, I don't listen, a free rain of fire is a free rain of fire. Um, a free chaos bolt, obviously I say is probably better in most raid settings. Maybe a rain of fire being better in some of the plus pulls at times. I feel like this is the most niche bonus of all the three, right? Cause Demo just has third dog, uh, another imp. Aph has just more rapture damage, uh, more dot duration and uh, free raptures, right? This sort of, ha you can get rain value in single target, right? Uh, you can get bolt value and a two target pull, right? Or 10 target pull technically, right? Cause you gotta hit a mob, but I don't hate this bonus uh, at all. I think it could be a, like a legit sleeper next patch. If Destro gets buffed, which it should, it should get some chaos bolt buffs and things. Um, this could be a serious sleeper bonus. Uh, it's really cool too. And I think myself and probably a lot of others are sort of undervaluing its actual potential here. Um, albeit, I don't think many know about it, the bolt being instant cast until now, um, as long as that, you know, stays true. But uh, Destro one looks really, really cool. And the play the cool thing is Destro, Demo, and Aph, every single one's going to change the play style of how you approach this spec. But the Destro one could change probably the play style the most. Like this is you can get some pretty insane chains going with this. So I'm pretty happy with it overall. Destro, Demo Aph, they all legitimately got like great bonuses. I'd probably say from like my personal, like I guess best to worst, number one Aph, number two Demo, number two Destro. But Destro like being right behind Demonology and arguably better too, right? We know that like if Destro, Demo and Aph, if they're all in a progression setting during like a raid tier, a race to world first, whatever, what have you, if they're all in their optimal setting, Destro is the best. Destro is a very, very, very good prog spec. It brings, typically brings a very good two target cleave profile, can bring good AOE, can bring good single target. Uh, it's very, very good. And this bonus could indeed feed into that. Plus like, hey, if you think Aflock is broken and holds the homer right now uh, <laughs> during MDI and things, wait till you get a Herald of Chaos proc in the MDI and then carry that into that pool. It's GG. Lock bonuses out of all the classes that I've seen legitimately look like they're probably some of the best ones to like change play style up and make things more interesting. I'm happy. Every single spec of Destro Demo F, they all got relevant bonuses and they all look really good. Uh, we'll see when PTR hits in a couple weeks, how they all feel. Uh, and we haven't even seen legendaries or legendary tuning, I would assume, or class tuning. And like, I'm not trying to hype everybody up with, like, like some kind of false like hype thing here, but like these bonuses legitimately from some other ones I've seen, these are pretty good.
And yeah, that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I gotta admit, like, like I said, lock bonuses just look insane. Uh, they all look really, really fun. The AF and Demo ones, I feel like sort of address, I don't know if they address issues. The AF ones sort of does. The Demo ones where it changes, like, the, the Demo ones like a middle ground. AF we know needed a Rapture buff and needed a single target, some single target help. The Demo one's like just cool and it works with Decon well and has like single target and AV implications. The Destro one's just, just pure chaos, uh, which is sort of cool. We'll see how it goes. Once again, it's probably a bit underrated. I think I'm probably sleeping on it a bit as well as other people are. Um, we'll just see. A, a big thing is it just depends how the fights are structured inside the actual raid. If you have a lot of single target fights and Destro's not like the best there, then it might be a bit mediocre, but if there's some big cleave fights or like, you know, Rain of Fire, that kind of fights. Uh, it could be, it could be pretty insane. Let me know what you guys think of this video and realistically the comment or the uh, tier bonuses in the comment section below. Uh, I'm legit really curious to hear what you guys think. For the most part, it seems everyone likes Destro the most. Uh, personally, I like AF a lot too, but Demo could be really cool depending on certain bonuses. Uh, once again, any weak ORS profiles add on you saw here, or I guess realistically any weak ORS you want, uh, <laughs> they're on my Twitch. If you want to swing by and hang out, uh, grab me time, feel free to do so. Uh, once again, I also want to mention and give a huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you many times for the support, guys. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, heads up once again, the uh, 9.2 Warlock spreadsheet, similar to 9.1, 9.0, all that. Um, the tier three failure rank on my Patreon or higher does indeed get early access to that. It should be going up, I would assume, within probably about a week or so, probably a little earlier than that. Honestly, now we have some tier out. Um, yeah, if you're interested in sporting, it should be a link somewhere up here as well as in the video description down below. Once again, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, if you're new to the channel, enjoy it. Want to see more, be sure to smash the like and sub buttons below. It helps out a ton. Thanks again, dudes, and I'll catch you all again soon on stream. Peace.